Welcome back to Tabor College. Beautiful night for KCAC matchup for the Blue Jays. We're at Joel H. Wayne Stadium here in Hillsborough, Kansas. Tabor Blue Jays take on McPherson College. Today's managers are Doug Quint for McPherson. They're in a 4-2 and record. He's in his 18th season. Grant Brubaker is here in his 15th season. Tabor are currently 2-4 and 1-0 and and in KCAC play. McPherson's starting lineups, Lucas Williams, Austin Cuevas, Ale Isaiah Alexander, Methula, Sean Thompson, Carlos Reyna, Daniel Connell, Caden Quint, Antoine Defenemir, George Ramos, and end goal, Colby Swift from Sedgwick, Kansas. Now for your Blue Jays starting lineup, William Boney, Jonathan Davis, Darius Armstrong, Kajubi Kalanzi, Owen Bellamy. Along with them, Rory Cameron, Tyler Combs, Sam Butler, Irvin Laren, and Ander. And in goal, Jesus Rondon from Merida, Venezuela. Your KCAC standings after one week of play. Currently sitting top is Bethany College and at bottom Sterling College. Tabor and McPherson both start off 1-0 one and, one and to start play, both getting a win. McPherson at Sterling and Tabor at Southwestern. And your referees today, Nick Carabinis, Aaron Diaz, Alan Peel. Both, te both teams just doing some final adjustments before they line up to do the starting lineups. We will have the starting lineups, a prayer, then the national anthem, and we'll get underway. As we just wait for both teams to line up here, the impact of this game is humongous as this is the second game in KCAC play. McPherson is currently ranked 24th in the nation, but both teams started out 1-0 and zero in KCAC play, both earning a win like I mentioned before. So both teams will be looking to go into this game with something to prove. Mac is obviously looking to solidify their stop, the spot in the national polls, and Tabor is looking to solidify their spot to in the College KCAC. For tonight's KCAC men's soccer matchup between the McPherson College Bulldogs and your Tabor College Blue Jays. Our officials for tonight's contest in the middle, Nick Carabinas, Assistant referees Aaron Dietz and Alan Pyle. Okay, I think we can start now. Let's meet the starting lineups first for McPherson. McPherson is coached by Doug Quint in his 19th season. Assistant coaches Kent Freund, Reed Hargrave, and Eric Bohm. For the Bulldogs on the field and goal, double zero, Colby Swift. Number two, Lucas Williams. Number three, Austin Cuevas. Number five, Isaiah Alexander. Number six, Nipo Methulu. 
Number seven, Sean Thompson. Number 11, Carlos Reyna. Number 14, Daniel Connell. Number 18, Caden Quint. Number 19, Antoine Detvernier. And number 99, Jorge Ramos. And now for your Tabor College Blue Jays. In his 15th season at the helm, your head coach is Grant Brubaker. Assistant coaches, Jeremy Crable and Zach Moore. In goal for the Blue Jays. A freshman for Merida, Venezuela, number one, Jesus Rondon. A junior from Frisco, Texas, number two, William Boney. A freshman from Lymington, England, number six, Johnny Davis. A junior from McPherson, Kansas, number eight, Darius Armstrong. A freshman from London, England, number 10, Kajubi Kalanzi. A freshman, excuse me, a sophomore from Essex, England, number 14, Owen Bellamy. A junior from Cambridge, England, number 16, Rory Cameron. A senior from Peoria, Arizona, number 17, Tyler Combs. A freshman from Worcester, England, number 23, Sam Butler. A junior from Arletta, California, number 29, Irvin Laren. And a freshman from Vitoria, Spain, number 30, Ender Bengocha. We join us now for a pregame word of prayer, followed by the playing of the national anthem. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this fine fall day, for these two teams, for the chance to study, to understand better the world around us, for the health to be here, for the joy of a sporting contest, for individuals learning to play as a team, for physical bodies and robust health, for minds honed by practice to peaks of excellence. Our Father, we thank you. Grant that we not take these days like this for granted. Give now each team the grace to play their best, to be a good sport, and to realize that win, lose, or tie, we all come away winners in creation. These things we pray in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Thank you. Both teams ready to take the field now. The Blue Jays are going to come over the sideline for one last team talk. Coach Grant Brubaker is just going to be looking to invite his team to take this game by the, uh, by the throat early on. The Blue Jays are very aware of how Highly anticipated this game has been. First home game since it's been a month now. KCAC play has just started. Blue Jays and Mac have started out on the right foot, both 1-0. Oh. 
So I'm sure Coach Grant Brubaker is going to be telling his team, we got to do what we got to do. Everybody's got to do their jobs. Everybody's got to be on the front foot tonight. And if we want to get something out of this game. Long history between Blue Jays and McPherson. Past, last year, they played twice, once in the fall and once in the spring. Both games ending 1-0, I believe. So you get a look at our new sideline camera, getting in on that team talk from Coach Grant Brubaker. So McPherson's already taken the field. The Bulldogs, on the other hand, they've still got something to prove. They've jumped one spot from 25th to 24th on the national polls. They'll want to go 2-0 on the KCAC and solidify their uh, spot at the top. Tabor coming off a harsh season last year, only earning one win in KCAC play. Of course, not enough to reach playoffs. This year, a new look, improved players, a new team. They'll be wanting to not only make the playoffs, but seed well. So the Blue Jays take the field. Your starting lineup, very reminiscent of the first KCAC game. That's where Tabor went to Southwestern and won 2 1. Two goals quick towards the end of the first half allowed the Blue Jays to stay in front for the entirety of the game. Southwestern pulled one back later on, but it wasn't enough to break the Blue Jays down. Tabor might be wanting to look to do something the same this game. McPherson's obviously on paper a stronger opponent. We'll see if that comes to fruition. So Andrew's going to be over the kickoff, and the Blue Jays are going to get the ball to start off the game. Looks to be a 4-2-3-1 from the Blue Jays. Your defense, Irvin, Darius, Rory, and Will. Your midfield, led by Jonathan Davis, Tyler Combs. And up front, Ander, Kajubi, Owen, and Sam. So we get play started here. Just some pressure on this right side. It's going to go to a play for a Bulldogs throw in. Both teams having a very strong preseason opponent. The only difference being the Bulldogs actually won a few games against some ranked teams, one being Briarcliff. The Blue Jays, currently 2-4. and four. Their only win in preseason came against Central Christian. Had some tough losses against some notable opponents, such as Midland and Concordia. The first game of the preseason being Oklahoma Panhandle State, which was the last game played here at Joe H. Wayne Stadium. Bulldogs just holding possession here in the back line. Looks to me that they're lined up in a 4-3-3 right now. Their wings back pushed forward. They're going to move out to this left side. As the fans start to pile in for this game. First KCAC game here at home for the Blue Jays. That ball is played in behind. Will is going to look to play that back out wide. Bellamy can't quite get to it. Andrew's going to press here in the midfield. Played out to this right side. Jonathan Davis looking to get on the ball. Can't quite do so. Buller pressing. Bulldogs not forcing anything too early. No long balls over top quite yet. So that's played forward. Well intercepted by the Blue Jays. Bulldogs just playing around halfway midfield line into their defense for now. Not looking to force the issues. The Blue Jays are doing well to hold their lines. As Armstrong comes in there for a quick tackle, falls to Irvin. He plays it forward, but only as far as a Bulldog player, number six in the midfield. He looks quite shifty for McPherson. Seemed there for a moment, Kajubi was going to get a quick interception or a breakaway, but the Bulldogs intervened. And that's played out to the left wing for Boney to pick up. Boney looking to hold him too. As the left winger starts to press, referee puts a whistle to his mouth, but he's playing advantage. Long shot there from number six of the Bulldogs, and Hazes is going to pick this up comfortably. Blue Jays, are, Blue Jays are going to get a chance to gain some possession here if they play it towards the back. As Jesus run done, just looks to spread the team out, gain some shape. That ball played in the midfield for Andrew to pick up. Gets the ball under control and plays it out to Kalanzi. And he's going to 
Unfortunately, take a miss pass, and Irvin's not going to be able to gather it, so Bulldogs throw in here on this near side. Seems the Blue Jays are going to be playing in a low block tonight. Just hoping to keep the Bulldogs' offensive power away from the attacking third. We'll see what that means in the attack buildup for the Blue Jays. They may have to sacrifice some bodies going forward in order to maintain that. As Davis does well to intercept this, but Buller's not going to quite get to it. Could you be just trying to press that? Ball still in the midfield here. The Bulldogs do well to maintain some possession. It's going to be important that the Blue Jays don't get worn out here early on. They need to find the ball, pass it around just as the Bulldogs are doing now because the Bulldogs are going to be looking to get the Blue Jays to tire down and take their chance forward as they haven't been forcing anything over the top, but that's going to be a long ball in for Jesus to gather. The Blue Jays' last game and the Bulldogs' last game was just Saturday. Bulldogs played Sterling and beat them, I believe, 3-0. And, of course, the Blue Jays went to Southwestern in 1-2-1. So both teams coming in with some momentum. Kalenzi does well to intercept and hold possession back. He's going to play that back to Armstrong. Just out wide to Kalenzi. Doesn't quite complete the skill, but does well to retain the ball. Darius Armstrong just got to play that forward and Buller does well to get a hand on it. Sam Butler does well to get a hand on it. I apologize for calling him Buller all this time. The Bulldogs are going to have a good chance in. He's going to take a shot on goal, and it's going to whisk wide. Sam Butler up here at the top just commanding his team force that and press that so he can't get a quick snapshot off. Sam Butler scored in the game against Southwestern. He actually scored the winning goal towards the end of the first half. He made it 2-0, and Southwesters only make it back 2-1, so he's credited with the game-winning goal. And that ball is going to go out for a Blue Jay throw in. Irvin Lara is going to take it. Ball comes in for Butler. Anders looking to press. Butler is going to help him. Your other goal scorer from the Southwestern game was Jonathan Davis off of a penalty kick that he won from a shot he played in, hit the hand of the Southwestern defender and awarded the penalty kick. This Bulldogs press in here. Good defense from the Blue Jays. And he's going to play that out wide for Owen Bellamy, and Owen Bellamy is going to go down this right wing with some pace. He's going to look to hold the ball up now. He's got Ander in the midfield as an option. He plays it to him. Ander plays it to Butler. Or, excuse me, Jonathan Davis, but some miscommunication there. Let's the ball go off and back down to the Blue Jay line. A miss pass there by Darius Armstrong. The Bulldogs are going to have a chance in behind. That's a great ball in behind up to this right wing. He's going to cut in on his left foot. Takes a quick snapshot. And Darius Armstrong does well to get back and correct his mistake. But it's going to be a Bulldog corner kick. The Blue Jays must avoid mistakes like that tonight. An opponent like this, they're going to make you pay when you give them free chances. So on this corner kick, Blue Jays need to man mark tight. Tyler Combs guards the front post. Owen Bellamy just looks to hold the guy next to the corner flag too, so they can't take a short corner. The ball comes in. A flick on. Tyler Combs on the near post looking to clear it. The ball's still on the ground, and it looks like Sam Butler clears that away for a corner kick. Tyler Combs there at the near post chose to be a viable option. As he just saved a goal, it was still flying around there, and Sam Butler cleared it. Good there, awareness there from the Blue Jays. Another corner comes in. Jesus punches that away. Still in. Blue Jays need to win this ball back, and an overhead kick from the Bulldogs means Jesus is going to pick this up comfortably, and the Blue Jays can reset. Now this is where the Blue Jays need to learn to have some possession. Cannot force the issue as Rory Cameron... Plays the ball wide. A Blue Jay's not going to be able to pick it up, but it's going to fall to Kajubi, but he couldn't quite get it under control. So the Bulldogs are going to try to go down this right side. Darius Armstrong does well. Irvin keeps that in. 
finds Kalanzi. Cannot quite find the second pass to Ander. Jonathan Davis just looking to press now. Puts a tackle in. No foul called. Ball still in play. Blue Jays got to be careful here on this right side. And that's going to be a misplaced pass by number 14 of the Bulldogs. A goal kick to Tabor College. So you're just seeing some shades of how talented the Bulldogs are here early, keeping the ball in possession. Blue Jays are going to have to learn to adapt to that with their formation and how they press. Ball comes into the midfield. Bulldogs head it forward. A collision there between Darius Armstrong and number 19 of the Bulldogs. The offer second there, the Blue Jays are going to be awarded a, a foul, but nevertheless finds Hayes' run down back to the goalkeeper position. He tries to play it out to this left wing side, not be able to keep it under control. But the Blue Jays will win a throw in. Butler does well to get ahead on that, just reading the correct flight of the ball, and it's going to go out for another Blue Jay throw in as they start to work up the field now. No need for the Blue Jays to force the issue yet. Make some smart decisions. That's a great throw in there for Owen. What's he going to do with it? He brings it down. He's still on the ball here. Plays it back out for Irvin. Bellamy on the ball. Owen Bellamy just looking for the quick feet now. Plays the safe option back to Jonathan Davis, who's also going to play it back to the keeper. Good awareness there from the Blue Jays once again. And the little things like that you might not have seen from last year. The awareness has just picked up a little bit for the Blue Jays this year. As that ball finds itself into the midfield for Jonathan Davis. Back to Boney. Well, Boney's going to look to play that ball forward. Sam Butler wasn't quite making the darting run in behind just yet. Maybe a little short for him to get onto. Kalanzi on the ball now. Jonathan Davis tries to play a one-time ball. Anders... Still got it on this right side. Wasn't able to keep it under control, but does manage to win a throw-in out of it. So the Blue Jays in a very promising position now. Maybe this is a chance for them to get some bodies forward. So Will Boney's going to be over this throw-in. Plays it quick to Sam Butler. Sam just playing it on that far side. He met, nutmegs a defender, I believe. And the referee is going to call it out over there on that far side before he won the throw-in. So the Bulldogs are going to get the throw-in. Instead, but this is also a chance for the Blue Jays to pinch a in if they'd like to. You just want to see the urgency from the Blue Jays tonight. This is a big game, a lot of momentum, starting off the KCA season with a win, a convincing win at that. If so we win the header, you just want to see them take this game and say, hey, I don't care that you're ranked in the national polls. I don't care how your record was last year in the KCAC. They just want to win this game, and I believe that's going to be the thoughts out there today. So all that's out the window. They just need to play their game and get what they can out of it. This ball is going to come into Butler once again. Ball is kept in play, but it only finds a Bulldog, so they're going to have a chance to counter. Darius Armstrong does well and shows his physicality. Bulldogs still on the ball. Irvin does well to intercept. Now into the Bulldog midfield. Pressing towards this attacking third on the right wing. Blue Jays just doing good to hold him so far, but the pressure's got to be there as Tyler Combs brings it, but he guesses too soon. A good cross in the box. Great defense from Rory Cameron. The referee waves away the offsides. Owen oh, Bellamy is going to get on the ball now. He just forces the issue too much. Couldn't quite get his foot on the ball. Tyler Collins once again tries for the tackle. Jonathan Davis does well to make a good tackle. And now the Blue Jays can counterattack. And Sam Butler couldn't quite find that run on the left wing. He's back on the ball now, though. The counter is gone, but the Blue Jays can get a chance going forward. That's a beautiful ball there from Kajubi Kalanzi. Irvin just looking to play a ball. He's going to play it down this left wing for Owen Bellamy, and that's going to be too heavy for Owen Bellamy to get up. Almost great play there from the Blue Jays as there was a great chance for a counterattack. Sam Butler saw it, just couldn't quite execute it in time. That's the perks of playing the low block for the Blue Jays against a team like this. Is if you get that lucky or that hard-worked interception... You can have you can turn on them quick and have numbers going forward, and that could be how the Blue Jays get their goal tonight. 
But it's just important they stay structured in their pressure, in their formation, as they look to do so right now. The organization and communication down there seems pretty good as this ball is going to find itself in behind. And Darius Armstrong is going to seem to trip up the striker and the referee calls for a foul. So the Bulldogs are going to have a great free kick position. Now, the history so far this year with Tabor and free kicks is we do concede quite the many free kicks. So the wall is going to need it structured right. If there needs to be a man on the line, Jesus can order a man to be on the line. So... We'll see what the approach is here from the Bulldogs and from the Blue Jays. This probably is going to be a direct shot if I had to put my money on it. Can't quite see who that is for the Bulldogs lining over it. Whistle's blown. Free kick taken. Bounces off the wall. Darius Armstrong flips it in the air and it goes out the backside for a goal kick. The referee... Points to, but he's going to correct himself and say a corner kick. That was a great awareness from Darius Armstrong as that ball deflected off the wall, but there was still a Bulldog running in behind. Darius Armstrong doesn't get a foot to that. Might very well could be 1-0 to the Bulldogs. They set this down for a corner kick. Here comes the ball in from the Bulldogs. A great run in from multiple Bulldogs. A free header almost, and they could not capitalize. The Blue Jays Cannot be happy with themselves to let a man go free there. Jesus Rondon takes the goal kick quickly. Not allowing time for the Bulldogs reset. Let's see if the Blue Jays can gain some possession. Will Boney just plays that into the midfield. Nobody's going to be able to get to it. Sam Butler working to press hard. He's working his tail off so far tonight. Owen Bellamy looks to step two. Found its way through the Tabor midfield, so Bulldogs are on it on this left wing. Good numbers back. Darius Armstrong clears it, but only as far as the Bulldogs player to the outside. A good snapshot. Jesus gets one hand to it, deflected out for a corner kick. Seemed for a moment Jesus Rundown was just going to overjump it there for a second. Gets a strong palm to it. Corner kick for the Bulldogs once again. Man marking has got to be tighter this time from the Blue Jays. Can't allow another free header. Ball comes in here for the Bulldogs. He's just run down with another punch. Andrew's going to look to get to this. The Bulldogs win it back. Bulldogs still on it. Somehow still on it. And the Bulldog player just fallen through too heavy on Ander, so the Blue Jays are going to get a free kick. And Jonathan Davis looks to roll it too far forward. The referee is going to order them to go back, so it looks like Darius Armstrong is going to take this free kick for the Blue Jays. I'm still looking to see the Blue Jays get two to three minutes of possession just to help them out on some fitness levels right now. They don't want to be chasing this game on 90. That ball is going to bounce a little oddly, but Owen Bellamy is going to get on it. Does well for a skill. Irvin Laren here on the left back into Jonathan Davis. Back to Irvin Laren. Still just trying to hold it up. Does well. Strong and physical. And the referee is going to call a foul against the Bulldogs. Blue Jays are going to have a good spot for a free kick. Owen Bellamy off a sprint to this left wing, but Irvin decides to lay off from it. Blue Jays pressing numbers into the box as you get a good shot there of Urban Lerman about to take this free kick. Ball comes in. Is it going to reach the box? It's going to curl out to the side of the box. This is cleared into the midfield. Urban does well to win the header. Owen can't quite judge the flight of the ball. Darius heads it back forward, but it's just as far as a bulldog. Darius once again with the header. Now pressing down this right wing, the Bulldogs look to counter. Great interception there by Will Boney, I believe. And a Blue Jay throwing on the far side. So almost 20 minutes into this game, 
It's been a lot of the Bulldogs. Tabor hasn't had a genuine chance at goal yet. They're going to look to change that before the end of this first half, but still 0-0. Blue Jays fighting hard against this team. Ander does well to win this ball in the midfield. He finds a great option out right to Sam Butler. This is a chance for the Blue Jays. Is he going to pick the right option? Looks for a cut inside for Kajubi Kalanza. He's on the ball. Looks to play it back to Jonathan Davis, who plays it out for Sam Butler, and it's too wide, and he can't get his touch under control. You just thought there for a moment Kajubi Kalanzi was going to have a snap at goal. Instead, lays it back to Jonathan Davis, which in hindsight maybe been a little too far out of the box and killed the chance. Jonathan Davis just decided to take it one time out to Sam Butler, and the chance is gone. But promising there from the Blue Jays, started by Ander winning that ball out of the midfield. Bulldogs reset here in the back line. Center back just holding it up. Decides to play a ball into the midfield. Does well to. Darius Armstrong working hard tonight so far. He's been the outstanding star of the defense of the Blue Jays so far this season. Getting out of them, a, getting them out of a couple of sticky situations so far. He's going to need to be on his game tonight. As the Bulldogs have some good attacking power, but for the Blue Jays to keep this team at bay, everybody on this field is going to have to work hard for all 90. Owen Bellamy does well to track back, and he's going to get called for a foul. So there's some uh, pushing and shoving going on there between the two. Referee is going to check on the injured player who just seemed to take a knock to the face. Referee is going to say no more. Oh, and Bellamy would probably be smart here to just walk away. That's another thing the Blue Jays want to avoid in this game. They can't afford to have any silly yellow cards or any, in fact, red cards. That would be worst case scenario. You just don't want to see the accumulation. Having somebody sent off would throw this game into a whirlwind for the Blue Jays. Sanders almost gets a good interception there. He would have been one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper. You just see the Bulldogs start to slack in some moments. Not having much urgency, as you see there. Sam Butler plays the ball for Owen Bellamy. Now the Blue Jays can break. He's going to play it out to this left side for Ander. Ander's first touch not convincing, though. Bulldogs are going to pick this up and play it back to the keeper. Keeper clears it into the midfield, but Tyler Combs is going to get on that. No, Bellamy is going to touch it down. He's going to look to play a ball over top for Kajubi Kalanzi, and it just ricochets, I believe, off the knee of Kajubi Kalanzi or the McPherson defender. It almost trickled into the goal. That was Taylor's first real chance. Blue Jays showing a lot of promise tonight. Just back to the Bulldogs back line. They were looking to win the ball back. Number six going to be in the midfield. Plays it out to the left winger of the Bulldogs. Rory Cameron is going to pick this up and look to clear it forward. Sam Butler is actually going to get on this. What's his first touch like, touch like? And the referee is going to call handball against him as his first touch just glided into his arm. Nothing he could do about it after that pop-up. So Bulldogs is going to have a good spot for a free kick. And they're going to take it quickly, but the referee is going to say no. They want to just play it back to the back line. Referee says no, you got to take it from the spot of the foul. The Bulldogs have a few numbers into the box, and they're going to play it into the box. Irvin just looks to head that out, smartly so. It's Bulldog throw in. Jonathan Davis wins the ball well, plays it out for Owen Bellamy. He needs to find an option here, cuts inside. Looks to switch the field, but it's only going to be as far as a Bulldog player is. Kajubi Klonzi can't quite get there, but a missed touch from the Bulldogs means Kajubi can break. One too many touches, though.
Played out to the right side for Woboni. As Kajubi's going to be sprinting into the right wing channel. He's going to get onto this one. He needs to find an option. Plays in it for Sam Butler, whose first touch is not good enough, and the referee weighs him to get up. Will Boney takes a shot, but that's going to go well wide as he had eyes for goal. There's pleads for a penalty kick, but it just seems Sam Butler got sandwiched in between three players there. The touch is probably going away from him, but we'll have to see if we can get a replay on that. Maybe not. Bulldogs reset. The Blue Jays are doing well to take their direct opportunities off of counters. But you're just hoping to see that maybe not every time they choose to take the break. It's going to be important for these Blue Jays to keep their stamina healthy throughout this 90 minutes. As these starting 11 will be really important to keep on for as much of the game as they can. Coach Grant Brubaker's chosen this lineup just to keep these Bulldogs at bay the best he can. The substitutions will play a key part in bringing on fresh legs, but the starting 11 needs to do the best they can to limit themselves, contain themselves, and choose the right options. That's just chested out for a Blue Jay throw in. Ball thrown in from Irvin Laren. It's going to fall right back to him. He plays it for Owen Bellamy. Darius Armstrong strong once again just to poke that ball away. And this is cleared out for Kajubi to get on. He's had a couple long runs, so he's going to look just to hold up the play. You can't blame him there. That was the smarter option. Played back to Jesus Rondon. Let's see if he can find a quick pass. Plays it into Darius Armstrong. Sam Butler does well to recognize to get to that ball. Jonathan Davis into Sam Butler. Still on the ball. Just looked for that driven pass out to the right wing that Kajubi Kalanzi couldn't quite complete it. Back into the Bulldogs midfield. Owen Bellamy picks up the interception though. Tries to play it quickly in for Sam Butler. He's going to work hard to get to it. This defender's just going to look to hold it up. Plays back to the keeper. Bulldogs play short to this left wing. The Bulldogs have just stretched the field a little bit. They've opened up some spaces for them. That's probably what they were looking to do. Darius, not a convincing clearance from Darius Armstrong. Back on this right wing, and the Bulldogs are going to win a goal kick as it bounced right back off the Bulldogs player. Great from Darius Armstrong. Stevan Reed starts to warm up on the sideline. Coach Grant Brubaker might be just looking to bring him on for the pace factor. Try to run these Bulldogs down the best he can. Until then, Blue Jays desperately in need of some more possession. They've had their fair share of the ball, though, so far. This ball is not going to find its way to Owen Bellamy. Jesus comes out for it. Some miscommunication there, and that's just going to be a throw in for the Bulldogs. Jesus needs to work hard to get back to his goal. This ball ricochets into the back line. Bulldogs still on it. Across into the far post. Nobody's going to be there for the Bulldogs. And Will Boney can pick this up comfortably. He needs to make a right option. Finds Kajubi Kalunzi on the right wing. Into Tyler Combs. Does well to beat the man. Andrews on the ball now. He plays that ball well into the midfield for Kajubi Kalunzi. Can he find the next pass for Sam Butler? He's onside. He's onside. He's in on goal. Sam Butler. He's still there. And Sam Butler scores. The Blue Jays go 1-0 up. To McPherson. And the crowd goes crazy for Sam Butler as he sprints to the sideline. The Blue Jays are 1 0 up. The Bulldogs are stunned. And the Blue Jays have a dream start here to this KCAC matchup. As the crowd is on their feet. So you get a replay here. 
Sam Butler just has the calm, cool composure to put it to the right side of the goalkeeper after the defender goes in for a tackle. And this game has turned on its head. The Blue Jays need to have, to have the composure to defend against the Bulldogs' retaliation that's bound to come now. But the Blue Jays have exactly what they needed, a 1-0 start against McPherson Bulldogs. Tabor is in dreamland right now. Only the first half, though, as we start re restart play here for the Bulldogs. As everyone finds their seat now again. We won't say upset alert yet. As the Bulldogs start to drive forward, Tyler Combs clears that out. And you're just probably going to see... A boost of energy into the Blue Jays now. This happened, the same thing with Southwestern. Not as high caliber of opponent, but means all the same. Once the Blue Jays started scoring, everybody started playing to their ability, and you can only hope to see the same in this game. Sam Butler stretches out there. You hope he hasn't pulled a muscle. He seems to be all right. He might be getting a sub soon, maybe not. So there's 16 minutes left to play here in the first half. For all you fans at home, I can only assume you just jumped out of your seats. The Bulldogs look to drive. Cut in here on the right side. Blue Jays just looking to press, not let that fast shot go off. Still looking to press. Bulldogs still on this side, and it goes just wide as Jesus was flat-footed and only watched it go by him. Goal kick for the Blue Jays. They survive a scare. The goal for the Blue Jays now, I'm not going to say they shouldn't be going for 2-0 into halftime, but they needed to hold on to this lead. Get to halftime, have their team talk, their break, and get re-energized for the second half. 15 minutes to go. Kajubi back on the ball. And another handball called against Kajubi Kalanzi. Seemed a bit light, but a referee saw it. Devin Reed is going to look to come onto the field on the next dead ball. Jonathan Davis intercepts. Owen Bellamy is going to look to get to it, and he's just going to push over the player. Might have been a light foul, but the Bulldogs will take it. Well, Bonnie does well to intercept that ball in behind. Bulldogs still on it, kicks a quick snapshot, and great save from Jesus Rondon. Jesus Rondon's energized. Definitely a great save from him as that was bulleting into the bottom right corner. As you get a quick instant replay there, couldn't quite see it well, but Sam Butler's going to look to get his head onto this ball. Can't quite. Andrew flicks it back into him. Some miscommunication there between Owen Bellamy and Sam Butler, but Irvin Lahren's on the ball now. And Sam Butler gives him a cheeky little nutmeg. And Irvin Lahren's here on this left wing. He does well to cut back. He just plays it back to Owen Bellamy. A good cross in behind, but K Kajubi wasn't quite making the right run. Just caught up in between the defender. The Blue Jays can't get let this, let this game get any more stretched than it is, though. So Will Boney clears it only into the Bulldog midfield. And just a snapshot there from the Bulldogs goes well over the top of the goal. So this is a chance for... The Blue Jays just to take some time as Devin Reed's going to come onto the field for your goal scorer of the game, Sam Butler. So he's going to get a good standing ovation from the crowd. Not so much standing, but the claps are there. As the coaches greet him, he'll be happy for that goal. But knowing him, he'll be hungry for more. He'll want his second going for the second half. Oh, and Bellamy just on the ball here. Too big of a touch, and the referee's going to say a Bulldog throw in, but the appeals for Blue Jay throw in. Not going to be given. Bulldogs made a substitution. Couldn't, I believe number 13 came on the field for number 6. Jubi Clancy does well to intercept this and get his foot on the ball. Played back to Owen Bellamy. 
In the midfield for Jonathan Davis. Could you be Kalonzi on the ball now? Played out to Irvin. Back with the Bulldogs. Darius can't quite get to him. And it's going to be another foul against Darius Armstrong just for chipping up a player. He doesn't need to get booked in this first half for sure, so he needs to be careful here with these last 12 minutes. But very aware of that player was in behind, so maybe a smart foul from him. Bulldogs start to play down the left wing. Cross into the box. Good header away from Darius Armstrong. Having a solid game for himself so far. Jonathan Davis does well to win that ball back. And now the Blue Jays can counter again. Owen Bellamy over here takes a heavy touch, but he's gonna, his pace is going to help him on this left wing. Now looking for an option. And that ball's just curled in again. You just thought maybe he should have cut into the midfield instead of taking the big touch, big touch out left. Great energy from the Blue Jays, just needing to choose the right path so far. I would even go as far as say the Blue Jays have had better quality scoring opportunities than the Bulldogs so far tonight. It's two more substitutions ready to come on for the Blue Jays. Cameron Aragon and Nicolo. Those will be two midfielders coming in the game on the next dead ball as Devin Reed gets it over here on this right wing and he was just trying to avoid it from going out of bounds and tried to play the ball in. It's going to find Kajibi Kalanzi here. And he's going to be fouled from behind as that seemed like a heavy challenge from behind. It's not going to warn a card though. So the Blue Jays in a promising position for a free kick. It's Kajibi Kalanzi probably is going to feel that one for a little bit. Owen Bellamy is going to be over the free kick. Jonathan Davis just, and Rory Cameron just lingering in this far post. Irvin has joined him now. Whistle blows. Ball ready to come in. Owen delivers it. Still in the air. Jonathan Davis looking to head that to the back post. And who's there? Who's there? Ander. Ander makes it 2-0. Ander makes it 2-0. Blue Jays up 2-0 as so he sprints to the sideline. Crowd goes crazy. The bench embraces him. 2-0 for the Blue Jays. Nine minutes, 57 seconds left in the first half. What are we seeing here tonight, folks? As you just see the awareness from Jonathan Davis, he realizes he's got to flick that to the back post. Andrew stays on side. One little touch into the side netting. And your Blue Jays are up 2-0. Wow. Wow. What a first half from the Blue Jays. They've done everything right so far. As your substitutions are about to come on, Tyler Combs is going to come off, and so is Jonathan Davis, the two midfielders who have worked their tail off. I believe Jonathan Davis is going to come off. Yes, he is. Jonathan Davis, Tyler Combs. So your two central defensive mids are going to come off, and Cameron Aragon and Nicola are going to come on and replace them. Great work from Tyler Combs and Jonathan Davis. As Jonathan Davis, your sister for that last goal, just the awareness, just to flick that to the back post. He's really grown as a player so far from last season. Asserting into his role, and Ander, the newcomer freshman at that attacking mid role, just the awareness to stay on side and tap that ball in. His play restarts here. The Blue Jays 2-0 up against number 24 in the nation. I mean, first some Bulldogs. Not a headline you thought you would hear tonight. But the Blue Jays believed, and so far that's paying off in the first half, as they're 2-0 up. Bulldogs are going to start playing down this left wing. Good interception there from Will Boney. Just important, again, for the Blue Jays not to get in their own heads now. 2-0 lead is actually the most dangerous lead in soccer there can be going into halftime. So Coach Grant Brubaker is going to have to do his role and get the boys prepared at halftime. And the boys on the field just need to get to the second half now. So Owen Bellamy is going to look to chase that down. The Bulldogs are going to get this ball in a promising position. Irvin Learn does well intercept, though. And he's chopped at. The referee doesn't blow his whistle, though, so the Bulldogs are going to get a throw in. <clears throat> Quick throw in to the Bulldogs. Rory.
Rory Miss controls that, but Will Bonney does well just to flick that back out. And Kajubi Klonzi is going to sprint onto this. And he just can't get his touch under control. So I'm not entirely sure who your striker is for the Blue Jays right now. Yeah, it's going to be Kajubi Kalanzi at your striker, and Devin Reese taking the right winger position. So just a slight positional change on the field. I believe it's been like that since Devin Reed came on the field. Just didn't catch it till now. You have to admire the hard work from the Blue Jays. As any team, any player watching this, I mean, this is what you strive for against a team like McPherson Bulldogs, but they're going to have a chance going in behind now. Darius Armstrong holds position well and just forces the McPherson player to go out to the right wing, and he just clears it away. Beautiful defending there from Darius Armstrong. And another substitution for the Bulldogs. On comes number 23, and off comes number 14. Cleared away by Cameron Aragon. Kajubi Klanzi holding the ball up. Plays a great ball into the midfield, but Andrew's not going to quite get to that. Nicolo looking to press now. That's a ball over the top. And Will Boney lets it go. Rory Cameron looking to get to it. And they just put enough pressure on the attacker for him just to steer it into Jesus Rondon's chest. And Will Boney just with the That's his first misplayed ball so far tonight. He's been great at the right back position as well. Mostly all Tabor players hitting on all cylinders tonight. And that's been a tale of Blue Jays giving up goals so far this season. It hasn't been team mistakes. It's been individual mistakes. So people have taken it into their own hands to clean up their own mistakes. And it's paying off so far tonight for the Blue Jays. And as a team, the Blue Jays have held their positioning well. Held the pressure well. Not too many complaints so far from the first half. Six minutes still left to go. Seems like a forever to go left in the first half now since we've scored two goals. This ball is played over top for number three. Irvin's going to hold him too. It was a great touch by the Bulldog, and he's going to beat Irvin, and it's just going to drift out of play for a goal kick. So, Blue Jays. Not, you can't even use the word holding on now. I mean, that's been the word associated for the Blue Jays anytime they've been in a winning position is can they hold on? Can they hold on? And now, for the first time, they're probably a long time, they're in an assertive position to say, hey, we're not just holding on. We've taken this game by the throat, and we're in pole position. It's going to be the Bulldogs that have to fight back. And you just love to see that this ball stays in place somehow. Noah Bellman is going to get up. You just love to see that the Blue Jays haven't just gone to defense. They still want more goals, and that's going to bounce off the arm of Kajubi Kalanzi, and he's going to foul from behind. Blue Jay bench not happy about that. Blue Jays win the ball back. And try to play it quickly into Kajubi. Devin Reed's pressing down this right wing. He's using his pace well just to apply some pressure. Hasn't been able to use in the attack yet, but this ball is going to bounce to Rory Cameron, who just clears it into the air. Maybe smartly so. That's a great chest down from the Bulldog. Owen Bellamy just working down this left wing just to give this number three problems from the Bulldogs. Tabor having to hold tight, and they do win it back, and Will Boney just clears that forward. Now it seems the Blue Jays are looking just to get to halftime as maybe some tired legs are starting to pick up there in the back line. The back lines had been on their toes all night to keep these Bulldogs out from the attacking third. Bulldogs still have the majority of the possession. There's no doubt about that, but that means nothing in this game at this point. They play a great ball to the right wing, but it seemed that the Blue Jay defense was in all on the same note, and they stepped and caught the right winger off sides. Great there from the Blue Jays. Is they're going to get a free kick. Just looking to take as much time off the clock as they can to get to halftime. <clears throat> and 
Wow, I can't imagine what that locker room will be like at halftime. Definitely some people just reminding them to stay, keep some calm heads. So I hope that for sure. So everyone's going to play this out to the right winger, Devin. Nicolo is going to look to sprint to this. And that ball is just going to trickle out of play, and the Blue Jays are going to get a throw in high up the field. So if they can nick a third, that would be almost incredible. And they might just be looking to hold it up. I'm not sure what the game plan has been from Coach Grootberry Maker down there on the sideline. So Andrew's going to do well to turn here. He's just looking to get in the box. He slips over. He's still on the ball. Well, he does another turn. And another turn. Some great skill from Andrew. He's still on the ball. He's still on the ball. Oh, and the Bulldogs finally take it away. Andrew's showing some incredible skill there. You thought he was going to take it past five Bulldog players and score on his own. Maybe he should have eventually passed it off, but... That ball is played in a Kajubi Kalunzi. It's going to go out of play for a Bulldog throw in. Two and a half minutes left here in the first half. Oh, and the Bulldog has a missed throw in. He's going to get a chance to retake it since it didn't go over his head. Now he gets a throw in. Will Bonnie just looking to win the header? Can't quite. And a foul is going to be called against Will Bonnet. I think he just tripped up on the far side of Bulldog player. Bulldogs take it quickly. They might just be looking to get the halftime at this point. There's a minute 50 left, and they're in their back line. Just play back the keeper. Owen Bellamy is going to need to watch that shoulder as the referee is keeping a close eye on him. He's the last person to keep, need to yellow as he's applying some valuable pressure on this near side. Bulldogs have a minute and a half to salvage something from this first half. So they get a good cross into the box. They're still on it. A quick shot. He's just run down. Saves and he's offside. So it's going to be no goal. The Bulldogs... You know, you thought initially the initial ball, the player was off sides, but that ricochet when the Bulldog tipped the player, he was clearly off sides. The Bulldogs obviously will not be happy with that. Maybe we can get a replay on the shot, but quite clearly standing in an offside position. So Blue Jays survive a scare, but the defense was doing their duty. As you see here, when the player takes a shot, he's quite clearly a step ahead of Rory Cameron, who is the last defender. So Blue Jays hold their line low. Wine, line well. Excuse me. And Jesus Ronald is going to kick that forward. It's even you can hear I'm a little starstruck right now with the result that's happening on the field for the first half. As there's 30 seconds now. Blue Jays just need to hold strong as the Bulldogs are going to throw this into their back line. Look to play the ball forward. And Will's just going to see that out for a corner kick. Bulldogs are going to have to work hard to get a corner off. Ten seconds left. Blue Jays need to mark well. This could be a little scrambly. Jesus Five, punches it four, out. Three, two, one. And that's going to be your first half here in Hillsborough, Kansas. Tabor College, two. McPherson Bulldogs, zero. A great first half from the Blue Jays. We'll see you in the second for hopefully the same result for the Blue Jays.
create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm Agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have... What you need. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. 
Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Many of you know that the Eitan Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitan Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitanAgency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsboro and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Many of you know that the Eitan Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitan Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitanAgency.com. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm Agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. 
At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Well, we we're going to show you some replays here of some key highlights from the first half. So we welcome you back here. So you just see some clinical balls in behind here from the start. Blue Jays are currently 2-0 up. As this is your chance, Sam Butler gets in behind well. Does well to stay calm and composed. And from our sideline camera, you see him slotted into the side netting. Some good, good saves from Jesus Rondon. You love that shot from... Sam Butler's goal. Jonathan Davis flicks into the backside, and what do you know? 2-0 to the Blue Jays from Ander. A great first half from the Blue Jays. As you see, a great celebration there. Tabor goes 2-0 up. Just some more highlights here from Jesus Rondon. He's also done his part in this game. That's going to include the replays. Yeah, so some great shots there for the Blue Jays. They'll definitely be excited about that after the game to get those shots. Um... But now the real work begins as we're about to start the second half. The Blue Jays have a 2-0 lead against the McPherson Bulldogs, ranked 24th in the nation. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how they come out. It seems that they're going to come out with the same exact starting 11 they started the game with. So the substitutions that came on the second half have now gone back to the bench. We'll see what the Blue Jay tactics are. I'm interested to see if they come out the same they did in the first half on the front foot or if they're just going to look to play defense for 45 minutes. If I had to say, or if I had to choose, I would say they're going to come out looking for a third because the truth of the matter is, is 2-0 lead is a very dangerous lead to have, but a 3-0 lead is almost impossible to come back from. So as a Blue Jay, you're going to want to do your part, your job, what Coach Grant Brubaker tells you to do, and either that's going to be sit in and defend or go out here and get a third goal. Either way, we're about to be underway here for your second half in Hillsborough, Kansas. Tabor Blue Jays 2, first and Bulldogs 0. The first is going to get us underway with the kickoff. And as I just walk down to the, the fans section here, you can just feel the energy and the excitement. It's been a long time since the Blue Jays have had a game like this, and everybody's loving to see it. The players on the field, 
energy's there as McPherson gets us under underway as they look to play the ball down the right wing. It's going to be a long 45 minutes. We'll see how both teams react. Well, Bonnie does well for interception, but it's only going to trickle. And it's just going to go out for a corner kick for the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs are definitely going to get, they probably got a crazy halftime speech. They're going to come out looking to play with a lot more energy than they did in the first half. We'll see what they have to offer to the Blue Jays. And we'll just hope to see the Blue Jays can stand to and hold their own. Owen Bellamy stands near the corner kick to a stop the short corner. Ball comes in from the Bulldogs. Cleared away by Rory Cameron. Owen Bellamy just looking to press here. Ender looking to press. He does win the ball back. Clears it only into a Bulldog. The Bulldog is now on this right wing. And Jonathan Davis is going to clear that into the midfield. Jonathan Davis still on the ball. Looking to keep it. Doing well so. He's still on the ball. And he somehow gets it to Tyler Combs, who gets it out to Kajubi Kalonzi. He can't quite get it under control. It's going to be important that the Blue Jays don't get tired legs early. They played a hard-fought game, so they're def some of them are definitely going to be feeling it, especially in that midfield as Sam Butler looks to press. The Bulldogs driving here from the center back position. Good one-two play, but Rory Cameron is going to sniff it out. Ball comes back into play for the Bulldogs. Rory Cameron with another good interception, but Will Bonley can only clear it as far as another Bulldog player. Cross comes in the box for the Bulldogs. Everyone's going to have to do well here. He does well to get up and get a header out. What throw in is it going to be? It's going to be a Bulldog throw in. And you can't help but feel a little nervous for the Blue Jays. This is a long second half. But you got to believe that they can keep doing what they're doing and hold on this game as the ball comes into the box. It's left free. Ball still in the box. And another open header for the Bulldogs. Just a little too heavy for the Bulldog to flick too. Nervy moments. And this is, might be the name of the game for the Blue Jays in the second half, but... With a strong 2-0 lead, they have a little room to work. So the Bulldogs start to drive back into the midfield from the center back roll. Tyler Combs with the pressure. Bulldogs still on the ball with the ball here on the edge of the box, intercepted by Jonathan Davis. Oh, and Bellamy is going to run onto it. He just looked to cut inside, but the Bulldog midfielder sniffed it out. And Jonathan Davis does well to win the ball back. He's going to look to play Owen Bellamy. Now Owen Bellamy springs to the midfield, and he just can't quite find Sam Butler in the channel. He had number six of the Bulldogs running in behind him, who was definitely going to try to snitch that ball away. Jonathan Davis working hard here to win the ball back and gets a foot to it. It's going to fall to Darius Armstrong, who's going to clear it back forward. Bulldogs will repossess. Kajubi Kalanzi is going to pick this ball up, play it into the striker role for Sam Butler, who's going to try to return it back to Kajubi Kalanzi. Sam Butler can't quite find him. Teller Combs wins this back, plays it out wide for Evan Laren. Owen Bellman takes a good first touch around the right back, and he's just going to win the ball back, though. So the Bulldogs are on it. Irvin might need to work back here. So he can't quite get the foot in. The ball's still in play. Bulldogs on it in the midfield. Tabor needs to show some urgency here. On the left wing into the box, just dummied it. And Irvin does well to clear that away. You get a nice shot of that ball coming down the sideline. Still working here in the midfield for the Bulldogs. They've enjoyed the fair share of possession this game, especially the start of the second half for the first five minutes. Well, Boney clears that to Kajubi Kalonzi. Sam Butler has a good first touch to keep that just to him. 
He's going to hold the ball up, and he just goes right past the defender. Great skill there from Sam Butler. He's still going down the side. He's going to look for something. He just gets pushed over, and the assistant referee is going to call a foul. Great work there from Sam Butler just to keep working that defender, put a, a few moves past him, and now the Blue Jays are going to have a good free kick position for Owen Bellamy to take. Sam Butler, this game, so far you'd have to say maybe men of the match going into the second half. Obviously scored the first goal, but just his work rate, that high pressure on the back line of the Bulldogs and plays like that, he's been a key player for the Blue Jays so far this game. Owen Bellamy's going to line this free kick up here on the right side. Good crossing position. Blue Jays are going to look to have numbers in the box. Owen Bellamy stands over it. Ball comes in. It's a good ball in. Couldn't quite get past the first defender, though. Just thought it might dip behind him. Kajubi Kalonzi's on the ball now and gets tackled from behind. Another good free kick position for the Blue Jays. And there's the Bulldog frustration coming out. And that's what the Blue Jays are going to want to see just to get in their mindsets a little bit. As this game starts to dwindle down, that might become more apparent from the Bulldogs, or so the Blue Jays would hope. Owen Bellamy's going to be over this one as well. This one's going to be need to be more of a have more curve on it this time to find the head of maybe Jonathan Davis there at the back post. As that ball comes in. It is going to find Jonathan Davis, but the Bulldog beats him to it. Andrew's going to line that up for a first-time left-footed volley. Goes over the post. Wasn't that far over top, though. Wasn't a bad idea. He was feeling it. He's also a goal scorer for today. Had great awareness to go towards that back post from a Jonathan Davis flick. Tapped it into the post. The right side netting. Bulldogs are going to reset. Little Boney clears it into the midfield for Owen Bellamy to pick up. Now he's got some room to play with. He's caught up to, though. Owen Bellamy just couldn't quite find a passing option. Played out to the right side. Owen Bellamy's going to look to hold two in the midfield. I just love to see Tabor holding the positions. That's a great tackle from Jonathan Davis, and he's going to look to get forward. He's finding himself in a peculiar position now, and he gets onto the ball. He's going to look to get it through, and he just couldn't quite find Sam Butler, but that ball is going to get cleared out for a throw in. Jonathan Davis with a great crunching tackle. He found himself in the attacking third almost. He's going to be tired from that one. But a good throw in position for the Blue Jays. But you just love to see the Blue Jays holding their positions in the defense. They're not forcing the issue with the pressure. They're just holding their guys in front of them. And it's paying off. There will be a lot to be learned from this game going forward against high ranked opponents. Throw in comes in. And the referee blows his whistle for maybe a... It was, I believe that's going to be a legal throw-in. And unfortunately, Sam Butler's hit the deck. He's going to get back up, though. He doesn't want to come off. He might just be feeling a little bit of an ankle injury. Might have gotten stamped on a little bit. He's going to be all right. Juby Clancy gets a good interception. Rory Cameron's just going to flick that forward. Sam Butler pleading to him just to play the ball on the ground. Devin Reed getting warmed up on the sideline. You might see him soon. He was the first sub of the first half for the Blue Jays. Ball over top for the Bulldogs. Well, Bonnie needs to find this. He heads it only as far as the edge of the box. Rory Cameron does well, though. Great awareness. Can't quite find Sam Butler, but after that close play, you can't blame him for just wanting to clear that one out. This ball's still in play magically from the Bulldogs. Irvin does well with the back flick. Still in play, and Irvin's just going to slice at that one. It's still in play somehow. Now it goes out, and it's going to be a Bulldog throw in. Misplaced pass there from the Bulldogs, and Darius just clears that. 
Now that ball's going to go out of play for a Blue Jay throw, and they're going to be pinned deep there. They're going to have to work to get out of this, not get caught out. And they're looking to win the ball back. Can't quite do so. Great crunching tackle, but the referee plays advantage. Bulldogs still on the ball here. Just holding his possession in the midfield. Misplaced pass there from the Bulldogs again. This ball is still somehow in play. Ender working hard to win it back. Now Jonathan Davis is going to just play it out. Darius Armstrong gambled and tried to win the ball back. He's going to get caught out. Now, Will Boney's got to work. And Jesus Rondon can't quite keep this in. So it came off the shoulder from Will Boney. Great defense by him. But it's going to be a corner kick to the Bulldogs. Corner kick comes in. Darius Armstrong strong at that back post. Ender just flicks it out. Played back to the keeper for the Bulldogs. The momentum in this game has been very apparent. Both teams, high energy. Can't always say that about every game in the KCAC. A lot of competitive teams, but... Sometimes the games just lose a little bit of energy, but both teams so far are holding two. Owen Bellamy wins a throw in for the Blue Jays. Throw in. Another Blue Jay throw in. Could you be in acres of space here on this right wing? We'll see if the Blue Jays can get under the ball and find him on a cross. Zoe Bellamy is going to look to press. Another clearance. Throw in for the Blue Jays. It seems the Bulldog players are upset with their back line, just looking for the easy option back to the keeper. A substitution for the Blue Jays. Devin Reed is going to come on for, I believe, Owen Bellamy. Yes, Owen Bellamy is going to come off for Devin Reed. So Kajubi Kalunzi is going to switch to the left side, and Devin Reed is going to take this right side. Throwing comes in. Devin Reed's first touch is a good one. He's going to cut inside. He's still on the ball, and it's going to trickle back to the first and goalkeeper. Pass into the midfield. Number six for the Bulldogs passes it off. Not too many openings for the Bulldogs so right now. They're just looking to work something happen against the Blue Jays. Not opening up for them as they look for a ball in behind. Great awareness and defense. Kajubi Kalanzi is going to pick this up. He's going to look to play Sam Butler on this near far side. Into the midfield for Jonathan Davis. Flicked over for Ander. He's not going to quite get a foot to it. But he does work hard and continue with his run. So Ander's in behind here. He's going to need to find an option. He's going to cut inside on his left. And cross that in. It's headed back down. Sam Butler seems to be a little run down right now. Into Devin Reed. A quick little flick. Tyler Combs does well to get up and get to it. Sam Butler's going to get to it. It's still there for Sam Butler. And he's just going to go in behind the McPherson player. And Sam Butler needs to be careful here. No need to get a silly card. And the referee is going to stop play. So somebody's probably going to be issued a card here. He's going to consult with the assistant ref. So you see a 
And who's going to be showing a card? Sam Butler. So you see the sideline camera on there. Some facial expressions. He's not happy with it. I believe Sam Butler once told me he's very prone to getting yellow cards. So what he doesn't need to do this game is get a second yellow. That would certainly tarnish his goal scoring attempt tonight. He's already got one goal. He's going to be looking for a second. That's for sure. He doesn't need to get sent off and put the Blue Jays in a sticky situation. So that's going to be your first caution for a Blue Jay tonight. Play restarts for the Bulldogs. And half an hour left for the Blue Jays to knock off the McPherson Bulldogs and go 2-0 and in the KCAC. Still quite a way, but Blue Jays working hard and doing their part. So this ball's on the right wing for the Bulldogs. Crossed in behind. That's going to be a little heavy. Blue Jay goal kick. The second half so far still full of energy. Not quite the uh, goal sc scoring opportunities you saw at this point after the first half. But nevertheless, the Blue Jays seem to still be playing the same way they were in the first half. Now you can obviously tell by there they were working hard in the first half. There's definitely going to be some tired legs. So maybe the intensity can't be as high, but they're certainly going to be trying to keep it there. Quick free kick for the Bulldogs. Just a push in behind. Not sure by who. So we restart play. Jonathan Davis looking to press. Drops back into the midfield. Will Bonner pressing hard as well. Devin Reed now. Bulldogs just finding some possession. Kajubi goes well to win that. It's only going to go out for a Bulldog throw in, but Kajubi definitely stopped a chance there happening on the right wing. Jonathan Davis, great clearance. Stepping out of that midfield into the side. Devin Reed with a great interception. He can be away here now. Is he going to pick the right option? He's going to play that into the midfield for Ander. Ander just lets it run past him and couldn't quite get his feet sorted out. Teller comes does well to get a touch to that, though. And Devin Reed flicks it back for Will Boney, who runs straight through the ball and does well to win a Blue Jay throw in. You just thought if Devin Reed could get a touch short out, he was going to be way on the right side instead. Does well to play a ball into Ander. Ander just chose the wrong option there in the moment. Sam Butler looking to work towards this. Let's the ball run over top. He's going to get to it, and he's going to get a foul called against him. Is there some... High hot heads down there, and oh no, the referee stopped the clock. Um, there's not going to be a card issued, or he's telling someone to come talk to him. I don't know who it is. Oh, it's going to be the Bulldog defender saying that's his last warning. But you have to say, he did was stopping a great chance at behind, so you're surprised not to see a caution there, but the referee just trying to hold the game, too. Referee starts play by, clock starts rolling again. Rory Cameron plays that in to the left side for Kajubi Kalonzi, and that's going to go over top, and he's going to try to keep that in. Does well, too. Sam needs to get to his feet. Jonathan Davis on the ball. He takes a quick shot. It's not there. Still working to get to it. And he can't quite win it as he just tumbles over. And that's going to be a foul for Devin Reed. So fans go crazy over that call. Somebody's going to get a card. It's going to be Devin Reed. I believe he's going to get a card. You see a replay here. 
He's just challenged for the ball, and oh, that's so harsh from the referee. So that's two cautions for the Blue Jays. Devin Reen might need to get subbed off soon enough because you can't have two attackers pressing all game on cautions. The last thing the Blue Jays need is a red card right now. They've suffered from it in the past. The same mistakes cannot be made. As the Bulldogs restart and the clock rolls. Here for the Bulldogs on the edge of the box. Still with the ball. Some good touches from the Bulldogs. Jonathan Davis looks to block that. And Jesus Rondon can only parry it. And Will Boney just let it go away. Jesus Rondon looked to get there. But the communication seemed to be off. No nonsense there from Will Boney. The good decision from him. And he looks to get to the ball again. Will Boney's on fire right now at defense. And that's a Blue Jay throw in. The energy's there from the Blue Jays. And you're loving to see it. It's just important they don't overstretch and don't overstep. We don't need people pulling up the cramps right now. Rory Cameron plays that in behind. Sam Butler's not going to be able to get to it. It's going to fall to Ender, though. And the Bulldog's just going to clear that out. Blue Jay throw in. Well, Bonnie, just looking to slow up play a little bit. He's going to get the throw in. Ender's not going to be able to get there. Tyler Combs is going to get this back. He plays it. Oh, he just tried to find the feet of Sam Butler. Couldn't quite, but it's found Ander. Ander just gets shoved off the ball. Rory Cameron with not a convincing first touch. He needs to be careful. Jonathan Davis wins this back in the midfield. He needs to find Sam in the middle. He looked for Kajubi Kalonzi on the left wing. Now Kajubi's going to get on the ball. Play back to Irvin Lern. Jonathan Davis, quick one, two. Couldn't get the return, though. Sam Butler just commanding that front line. You love to see it from the freshman. Freshman. Ball over top to this left wing for the Bulldogs. Will Bonney with another gray header. He is commanding this right back role tonight. The Bulldogs are just not finding the openings they need. They're having all the possession in the world, but Blue Jays are up to it so far. Could you be clumsy with great defense? And he wins the ball back into Sam Butler. He's tumbled over on this far side. Sam Butler plays it in for Ander. Advantage was played by the referee, smartly so. Devin Reed's going to look to beat him on this right wing. He's using his pace well. He's still going on this right wing, and he gets challenged. And the referee has stopped the clock, and this is going to be a card. Devin Reed using his pace well. And that's going to be a yellow card for the Bulldog. You see this on the sideline camera. Great action shot there as Devin Reed just beat the man. Bulldog was aware and knew he was away, so he took him out. Earns the yellow card for his troubles. Devin Reed's going to be over this free kick. Now, he has an interesting way of taking free kicks usually. He'll put a lot of uh, backspin on and it'll just start to rise and dip at the last second. He's had some assists off corners in the past, so we'll see what happens here. He needs to keep it far away enough from the keeper so the keeper can't easily grab it. Jonathan Davis lurking that back post once again. It's low ball in. Flicked in. The Bulldogs are going to get this away, though. Didn't quite go for the overarching cross I thought he might. Bulldog needs to work... Or, excuse me, the Blue Jays need to work hard to get back now. <coughs> well, Boney mistimes his tackle. He's still throwing a shoulder in there. Needs to be careful here. And he does finally win the ball back, and Andrew's on it. Great work there by Will Boney. But Andrew chooses the wrong option. He couldn't find Jonathan Davis in the midfield. Instead, tried Sam Butler up top.
And that's going to be a foul from Jonathan Davis. Heavy challenge. Or no, the referees played advantage. Probably smartly so, but the Bulldogs thought they were getting a free kick, and that ball is going to go in across. Darius Armstrong is going to clear. Jonathan Davis needs to clear as well. And the referee waves him up. Penalty claims, and that ball's just going to finally go out. You thought for a second there the Bulldogs were going to get a cheeky penalty. Jonathan Davis was scared there for a moment, but he held himself well. Tyler Coleman gives him a pat on the back. Owen Bellamy looks to come on for a substitution. Who's going to come off? It's going to be Kajubi Kalanzi. Great work from him over on that left wing side. He's worked well back. More importantly, going back to defense. Sam Butler gives Owen Bellamy some instructions. Kajubi Kalanzi is going to be the one to come off. Jesus run down with a goal kick to the left side. That's going to find its way into the midfield, actually. Sam Butler on the ball now. Miscommunication there from Jonathan Davis. And referee's going to put his whistle to his mouth. And he's going to stop play. Who's going to get the yellow card? And that's going to be his... F Ooh, let's see. That's going to be a yellow card. He was on his final warning. Uh-oh. I believe Jonathan Davis is going to need some medical attention here. He took a heavy challenge. He is dealing with a slight ankle injury that he's been working to rehab, so this could be a problem. So we look to see what happens on that play. It's a miscommunication between him and Ander, and the defender just follows through. As there's some hot heads going on between players down there. Oh, and Bellamy looks to defend his teammate. The Bulldogs probably not showing good sportsmanship there on the far side. So our athletic trainer coaches go out there to check on Jonathan Davis. Let's just recap what's going on so far this game. First half, tail of the Blue Jays. Started off by Sam Butler in the first half. Found his way in behind the defense. The center back went to slide to him. Sam Butler stayed calm and cool. Put it into the side netting. Flash forward not too far later. Off a free kick, the ball floated into the air. Jonathan Davis flicked it to the back post and waited there was Ander who flicked it into the goal. And that's your game right now. It's the 2-0. The Bulldogs have had no answers. Jesus Rundown has had a good few saves. But as Jonathan Davis looks to walk this off, he doesn't seem to be in too much serious injury. But we'll see if he can come back on. He might not be able to. So subs ready for him. I don't know who's going to come on for him. Um... But that's the, that's the tale of your game so far in the second half. Same story. Blue Jays just have had their goals. Blue Jays get some good chances in behind. Bulldogs just can't break down the defense. So it seems that Nikolu is going to be the one to come on for Jonathan Davis. As Jonathan Davis gives him a good slap to the hands and needs him to put in a shift for him. Because that might be Jonathan Davis' final touch of this game. If so... He has your assist for the second goal, and what an assist that was, by the way. Just the calm composure from the top of the box to flick it to the back post. And in the midfield, the workhorse, along with Tyler Combs and that starting 11, they've really put in the shift. So he's going to get some much-earned break time right now on the bench. And this ball's going to be playing for a free kick. Sam Butler's going to look to get his head on it. He flicks it forward, but not enough pace. Bulldog keeper's going to pick it up. Sam Butler seems to be a little bit... Shaking up. It might be his ankle still bothering him as well. I believe he got charted on earlier on in the game. Tyler Combs with a flick. Only as far as back as Darius Armstrong, who's going to head that back to Jesus Rondon. You just love the awareness from the defender. Darius Armstrong, once again, having a solid game at center back. I believe Evan Herbrandt's warming up there on the sideline. He's going to be a defensive substitution. I can only assume for maybe Will Boney at right back, but we'll see. That ball is going to float into the midfield. And he's going to look to win it. Oh, once again, cleared forward by the Bulldogs. Hayes is going to be able to pick this up easily. And this is where the frustration from the Bulldogs might be coming along. Hayes' rundown just fiddles with it now just to waste as much time as he can, and he's going to pick the ball up. Yeah, the Bulldogs, I mean, they have to be frustrated right now. They can't be happy with their performance, so we'll see if they spark a light under themselves or if they're going to continue to play frustrated. 
That ball's going to be played on the left wing. Owen couldn't quite get under control. Tyler Collins looking to win it back. And that's going to be stop the clock. If I'm not sure what's what's happened, what's occurred. The referee is going to go over to the sideline and talk to his assistant ref. I'm not sure what for. As they meet over on the far side away from the players. Not sure if we're going to get clarification on that or not. There's a foul on the edge of the box, right? On, I'm not. I mean, I'm not sure what happened. To be quite honest with you, but the Bulldogs have found themselves in a great scoring opportunity. It's going to take some skill to get this open over the wall, or they could go far post. We'll see what happens. But couldn't quite catch what happened there. But this is the chance for the Bulldogs to get put one on the board. Blue Jays need to defend well. Jesus Rondon needs to be on his line, ready to go. We'll see if they have a free kick tactic up their sleeve or if they'll just take a direct shot. <clears throat> Jesus Rondon's very far to his left right now. We'll see what happens as they line up for this free kick. Dangerous opportunity and that's way too far over the top. Blue Jays can breathe now. So they're going to get a goal kick and a substitution for the Bulldogs. Number 22 comes on for number, I believe that's going to be 11. Jesus run down over the goal kick. Bulldogs pressing down this left side. Will looks to get a tackle in. He can't quite. Rory Cameron with the heavy challenge. And that's going to be a foul against him. And Rory Cameron's not happy about that. He's going to earn a yellow card. Huh. And you'd think from a heavy challenge like that, the player would be more hurt than that. But the referee saw it differently. So another... Great free kick position for the Bulldogs. Somebody needs to mark this number 99 here at the top of the box. You see the replay. He goes in, and it might just be for the studs up when you see it again on the replay. Late decision there from the referee. I had to think about it for a moment, but maybe they're correct calling the end. Nevertheless, Tabor has to move on from that. This number 99 on the edge of the box, they could easily play it to and have a quick shot, so we'll see what happens. I believe Devin Reed's ready to sprint to him if that's the case. Free kick comes in. That's near post. And Jesus Rondon sees it. Wow, great awareness there from the keeper. Held my breath there for a moment. There was a lot of space open to that near post. And the McPherson Bulldog player just saw it, went for it. So you see a replay here. Jesus Rondon just not expecting that. And that wall opened up from Devin Reed. So Jesus does well. This ball back in the midfield. Oh, that's a great flick there from the Bulldog player. And that's going to be a foul against the Blue Jays. I believe referee played a vintage for a, a second, but realized the chance was gone. So another good free kick position. Once again, these players have to be careful not to get sent off right now. There's 18 and a half minutes left in the game. That's still plenty of time for the Bulldogs to get back in this game. Whistle blows for the free kick to be taken. Here it comes. And Hayes just run down with a good save. So it's going to be a corner kick. I really don't believe that had enough pace to really trouble the goal, but Hayes just run down nevertheless had to be quick to dive. Corner kick comes in. 
It's going to be a good ball in, and it's just going to oh, go past all the players. <laughs> and Tabor gets away with a goal kick. And there's going to be three substitutions to come on now. Jonathan Davis comes back in the game, so he's not going to be seriously hurt. Could you be Kalanzi? And for the first time this game, Evan Herebrandt. Off comes Will Boney, I believe. No, Will Boney's going to stay on the field. So let's see who's coming off on the defensive role for Evan Herebrandt. So who's coming off? I'm not sure which. Devin Reed's come off. Nicolo's come off. And Sam Butler's come off. So we've just added one more defender, it looks like. Yeah, so it seems that Tabor's gone to a five back now. So your center backs will be Evan Herebrandt, Rory Cameron, Darius Armstrong, and your wing backs will be Will Boney and Irvin, Irvin Laren. As Bulldogs are going to get on this. And Owen Bellamy's going to take the lone striker role up top. So I'm not sure what the formation exactly looks like, but I know it's a five back. Tabor sprints on his left line. So Tabor has, as Kajubi's going to get on this. We'll get back to that in a moment. Owen's going to look to keep the ball. Owen Bellamy passes it off for Kajubi Kalanzi. And that ball's going to go out for Blue Jay. Throw in. So it seems to me like it's a five. I'm going to say five, three, one. Well, that doesn't even mathematically have it. Maybe a five, three, two. And that's going to be a free kick for the Blue Jays. They're going to be able to get forward now if they choose to. But it just seems like Coach Grant Brubaker has decided that with 15 minutes left in this game, now is the time to solidify the defense. And we'll see if that pays off as a good call. It's definitely going to help the back line as they've been getting penetrated more as this second half has gone on. So maybe he's just realized that and wanted to give some reinforcement to Darius Armstrong and Rory Cameron. This ball comes into the box. Far post is Jonathan Davis, who can't quite get to it, and he's going to get a foul called against him for pushing in the back. So that chance is gone. And the Bulldogs are going to look to take this free kick quickly. Owen Bellamy just looking to press. Ball played in behind for the Bulldogs. Hayes' Rondon is going to be able to get to that quickly. Excuse me. No, Will Boney's going to have to clear that away. Ender with the little flick, but it's not going to find a Blue Jay. Tyler Combs working hard still in that midfield. He's played all of the second half so far. Ender looking to win that ball back. He does so well, but he can't quite keep his footing on it. He's still trying to win it back. Needs to be careful. Jonathan Davis pressing now. <clears throat> that ball is going to be crossed in behind. And they're just going to watch that go. Actually, Jesus Rondon is going to look to chest that down and kill some more time. Smartly so. Great management there by Jesus Rondon. Just looking to aggravate the Bulldogs every chance he can. Ball played forward. Bulldogs flick it back. And that's just going to be played back to the keeper for the Bulldogs. Ball played in behind, and Jesus Rondon is going to be able to get his hand to this one. You can just kind of feel the atmosphere being drained out a little bit as Tabor's just hoping these last 13 minutes don't Work out for the Bulldogs. It almost seems like every breath he takes, one's an inch closer to the win for the Blue Jays. But I won't give them the commentator's curse right now, so let's keep moving forward with the game as the Bulldogs go on the right wing. That's a cross in the box. Jesus Rondon punches it away. They gear up for a shot. Jonathan Davis does well to block it, but it's still here with the Bulldogs. They're still driving forward. Cleared away by, I believe that was Rory Cameron. It was. Ball played into the box. That's going to go deep. Darius Armstrong wins the header once again. Jonathan Davis flicks it back backwards. He's still pressing. Not Owen Bellamy is going to get on the ball. He needs to look to play this ball back and get some possession here. He does well. He's still on the ball. 
He's got a guy coming in behind him. He's going to find Andrew down this left wing. Andrew's just going to get out muscled. Probably chose the wrong option there in the end. That ball's going to be played lazily out by the keeper, but the left back's going to work hard to get there. Once again, another ball forward from the Bulldogs. Rory Cameron just clears that down. Will Bonnet clears it forward. And Tyler Combs looked just to clear that forward as well. Evan, here, Brant. Will Bonnie. Oh, no. Will Bonnie might have pulled a muscle doing that. He's going to let it continue. If he's hurt, he's got to go down. Realizes he can't right now. He might be done. Kajubi Kalonzi gets on that ball. Jonathan Davis plays it back to him. Kajubi Kalonzi is going to get to it. He's going to cut inside. Now the Blue Jays can break here. He's working, and it just gets away from him. So what's it, is it going to trickle out for a throw in? It is, it is, it is. So the Blue Jays are going to get a throw in here on the far side. Will Boney struggling here on this near side. He's going to look to stay in the game, though. Urban Lara is going to take the throw in on that far side. Just looking to time waste a little bit more. Just as many seconds as they can. He's going to play that in for Jonathan Davis. Who's going to flick it backwards. Andrew's going to get on it. And he couldn't quite get the front foot on it. It did end up being a shot on goal. But the keeper picked it up easily. The Bulldogs just working through this midfield right now. Tyler Combs does well with a crunching tackle. Bulldog still with the ball, though. That's a good ball in behind. The Blue Jays let it go, but so did the Bulldog player, striker. Nervy moments for the Blue Jays right now. So referee's probably going to see if he can keep Hayes' run out from time-wasting, but Hayes' run out gets it. Gone within a reasonable amount of time. Jonathan Davis on the ball again. Plays it in for Owen Bellamy. Great flick around. Can Ander find him again? What's the Bulldog defender going to do? He's going to play to his keeper. He's put the keeper in odd position. Keeper's going to clear it out. Will Boney's going to get on it. And Will Boney just tried to play a first-time ball into Ander. Didn't work out, though. Darius Armstrong's got to work hard to win this ball back. And he does well. Beautiful defending by Darius Armstrong. Oh, Kajubi Kalanzi with the turn. Oh, he's still on it. You love to see it a scorgeous play, but he couldn't quite do the pass to Owen Bellamy. And the Blue Jays are just getting every interception they can. Another crunching tackle there from Jonathan Davis. Bulldogs still with the ball, though. <clears throat> and that's going to hit the referee. Ball, and he's going to call for a drop ball. It'll be the Bulldogs' ball from a drop throw. Nine and a half minutes left. Time's starting to dwindle for the Bulldogs. Time's starting to dwindle for the Blue Jays. That ball's going to come in. He's just running on these to watch that go, and he does well. He does well. Blue Jay goal kick. Substitution there for the Blue Jays, but it looks like Jonathan Davis is going to go down with a cramp, so we'll see who warms up for him. Bulldogs are going to be allowed to make their substitution. Number 13 comes on for number 99. Play's ready to restart. Jonathan Davis isn't going to need to get a sub. Nikola is warming up though for him in case that's needed. Nine minutes left. You're just hoping that this 11 can stay on the field for now, but we'll see what ends up occurring. You definitely don't want players that can't keep going to stay on the field, so we'll see what the substitutions look like for this last nine minutes as the ball comes back into play. And Jonathan Davis just runs in the back of the Bulldog defender, and the Bulldogs are going to take a quick free kick. They're definitely not trying to time waste at all. They want all these free kicks to go as quickly as possible. They need two goals just to tie this game up and send it to overtime. <clears throat> Andrew just flicks it forward. Owen Bellamy wasn't there. Crossed in from the Bulldog player. Will Boney heads that back forward. Tyler Combs 
kind of seemed to lose it in the air. Well, Bonnie just <laughs> clears it away. He seems to be struggling out there, but his defensive performance tonight has been impeccable. Tyler Combs looking to hold this ball up. Number six for the Bulldogs, just working the midfield a little bit. Oh, well, Bonnie with a good interception. He can't find Owen Bellamy. Just a little bit of frustration for the Blue Jays. They just need to realize this is a two-goal game. There's seven minutes and 45 seconds left. It's not the time for individual mistakes. Owen Bellamy looks to get on this. Great skill. And the referee just waves him up. This ball is going to go out to the right wing. Darius working hard. Darius with a great poke away. Throw in taken quickly. Irvin working on this right side now. And that ball is going to go over top, and it's going to be a goal kick. More time for the Blue Jays to kill now. Seven minutes left. The chance for the Bulldogs to get back in the game is slowly dwindling down. But if we've learned anything from the girls' game before, if you watch that, all it takes is a few minutes to change the game on its head. So the Blue Jays won't want that to happen to them. Owen Bellamy on the ball now. Just looking to hold it up. And does a little no-look pass to Will Boney. Well, Boney with the skill. He beats a player. He's looking to go down this right side. He plays it in the midfield for Ander. Ander does a, almost a good first little outside-the-foot touch to Kajubi Kalanzi. And Kajubi Kalanzi wins it back well. Oh, he just didn't lead Irvin in the right way. Disappointing there from Kajubi Kalanzi. He worked so hard to get the win the ball back. Cut and complete the pass. Keeper almost takes too heavy a touch for Irvin. Now Irvin's got to work hard to get back to the left-back position. That left side's open. Will Boney, once again, relentless defending. Will Boney, he's going to get to it again. What's he going to do with it? He's just going to clear it forward, as he should do in that situation. Five and a half minutes about to be coming up on us here. Devin Reed's getting some final team talk from Grant Brubaker before he comes on as a sub. <laughs> now, Tyler Combs is going to get the ball in the midfield. He needs to play it out for Owen. Owen Bellamy is going to get on the ball now. What's he going to do? He's going to look for the flick. Doesn't get it. And that's going to be a foul for the Blue Jays. As I believe he got cleated. <laughs> and the Bulldog, ref or Bulldog coach does not like that. I mean, there was a follow-through on Owen Bellamy. So you see the sideline picture of it. The clock has stopped, though. As the Bulldog head coach just pleads with the official. So you see a replay here. Great look from the sideline camera. And yeah, he just follows through with the little kick out. Rory Cameron plays that in down the sideline. Owen Bellamy is going to do well to get a good touch to it. He looks to do well to get it out now. He's going to find a cross in now. And who's there? Jonathan Davis with a great touch to it, but he couldn't quite steer it towards goal. Couldn't quite get enough on it. Owen Bellamy was fouled, but referee did well to play advantage. Jonathan Davis has got to work hard to get back now. That ankle is probably bothering him. Maybe it could be a cramp. Who knows? But he's working hard to get back right now. Oh, and Bellamy's going to take up his position. Oh, Will Boney again. Great defense. The energy from the Blue Jays is just all over the place. And now the crowd is starting to find itself alive as the time starts to tick down. And that's going to be a foul against, I believe that was Darius Armstrong, his first, if you even want to call it mistake of the game, infraction would be a better word. Bulldog gets a good chance for a free kick, though. Let's see if they don't make us pay for it. Well, 
Bulldogs take the free kick. It's going to bounce to the near post. Evan Herbrandt just clears it away. Well done by the Blue Jay. Four minutes. It just seems like every minute lasts an hour right now. Blue Jays just have a little bit more to give and an error and pass from the Bulldogs as their frustration finally starts to take the most of them. And Will Boney is going to let that leave for Evan Herbrandt for the throw in. Evan Herbrandt throws it in for Owen Bellamy, who tries to flick it on. Ball played forward by the Bulldogs. Rory Cameron needs to judge as well. And that's just going to flick back. And Evan Herbrandt just clears it in the air. He thought maybe it could fall back to Jesus Rondon, but it's still here, though. And Tyler Combs clears that. And that's a foul against Owen Bellamy, so another good position for the Bulldog free kick. Owen Bellamy needs to be careful. Oh, and he's going to play is going to stop. He's going to earn himself a yellow card. I'm glad that's just his first because I was under the impression he was already on one from the first half. As the bench is telling him to go mark somebody, as they should. Owen Bellamy needs to forget about it right now. There's three minutes left in this game. Now is not the time to give away a, <laughs> a silly goal. So Owen Bellamy picks up a yellow card. I believe that's the third or fourth for the Blue Jays tonight. Poor thing is, nobody's been sent off yet. So Here comes the ball in. Looks to be a decent ball in. Great header away. I believe that was by Jonathan Davis. Tyler Combs looks to work hard here. Evan Herbrandt and Will Boney, and that's just going to go out for a Blue Jay throw in. More time just to tick off the clock, and it now looks inevitable for the Bulldogs to score two. But the Blue Jays need to be careful. Tyler Combs, another crunching tackle. Oh, no, and the referee calls it a foul. Oh, wow, the Blue Jays are baffled. You just wonder how. You just wonder how. No studs were followed through with. And he won the ball. Let's see. Oh, wow. The referee wasn't even looking at the play. Oh, and you see slow-mo. Maybe a little kick out from the left leg. But that's too much. And Jesus Rundown saves well. And Jesus Rundown is going to fall on the ground eat some more time, as he should do. Two minutes away from... The Blue Jays pulling off a great win against the number 24th ranked, but first some Bulldogs. As this rundown plays it forward, and wow, it's inevitable that the Blue Jays have a win in sight. Will Pony working hard again. He doesn't quite win the ball this time. Now Tyler Combs has got to work hard. Bulldogs on the ball now. Still working hard, and Darius Armstrong clears it away. It's going to be a game of hoof ball for the Blue Jays now. And that's something they've wanted in the past. Right now, it's what they need. The Bulldogs looking to play it forward. Flicked off. Oh, and Bellamy looked to take a first touch. Not going to get it. He does not need to get a second yellow right now. He's going to call a foul against him. And Owen Bellamy needs to watch himself right now. He does not want to get miss the game against Oklahoma Wesleyan next, this weekend. And that ball is going to come into the box. Handed away by Darius Armstrong. Still here for number 14. Minute left here in the game. The Bulldogs just can't find the opening. <clears throat> Will Pony working hard here on this right side as the crowd stands to their feet. Headed away again. Evan Herbrandt heads it forward. Ender's on the ball now. He's going to look to play it out the left side. And here goes Kachubi Kalanzi. He's going to play it out for the Ender. 30 seconds left, and you're going to hear this crowd roar, the bench roar, the players jump in celebration. As time starts to tick down, you got 20 seconds left, and the Bulldogs are accepting their fate against the Blue Jays tonight. Headed away. 10 seconds left as the crowd starts to chant. Eight, you get your seven, countdown. Six, five, four, three, two. One. And that's going to be your ball game. Wonderland for the Blue Jays. 
as you can hear the crowd and you can see it from the sideline camera. Tabor College Blue Jays 2, McPherson Bulldogs 0. The Blue Jays knock off the number 24 team in the nation. And the field is just littered with fans right now. When would you have thought you had seen this at a men's soccer game this year? Absolute wonderland for the Blue Jays. As the crowd gets into it a little bit. Wow. Absolute scenes for the Blue Jays. A great win for the Blue Jays as they will go 2-0 and zero in the KCAC. And they will play Oklahoma Wesleyan ranked third in the nation this weekend. A great ball game. I hope you enjoyed watching. The Blue Jays are definitely going to try to keep this stride going into the weekend as they knock off number 24. And I hope you enjoy tonight. Thank you.